Good morning, everyone. We thank the Lord that uh, we are gathered here once again in the in our church, especially this Sunday. Nga nagita makasimba makadaig sa Ginoo, and uh, we thank God that uh, we can experience once again. We can uh, hear His message and help us grow as. Uh, we build our family since this month. Uh, the topic is hope for today's family. So, by the way, how's your weekend? Musta inyo mga weekends? Musta inyo hang mga vacation? Asama mo naga ng expense niyo weekend. I thank the Lord that we had our teachers retreat yesterday, uh, starting on atong Friday and Saturday morning. Dito sa Liluan, and I praise God for the fellowship. We praise God for the fun, for the lessons that we have learned sa amo ang uh, seminars from each department sa, uh, for our VBS and uh, Sunday school. So, we also thank God for the place nga kato nindo to siya for uh, our fellowship. Maybe soon, may mga overnight fellowship, not mga professionals or mga young people or even adults. Uh, nindo to nga place. Distansya sa city and uh, makita ato ang nature, ang bukid. So we thank God. It's a blessing to be a part of that fellowship because it's one way. It's one. It's one way of strengthening our our relationship with God and our relationship with the church. So as a church, as one body of Christ, and that is our goal. That is our goal to have unity, and each believer is to grow into into maturity. Every believer to grow into uh, maturity, which is also related to our theme, hope for today's family. And as a church, we want everyone, every family, every member of our family, we want them to grow mature. We want them to be united in Christ. It's every a parent's desire to have unity and harmony. Sa inyo hang panimalay, di ba? Gusto ninyo ng inyo hang mga anak, inyo hang inyong asawa na ay kalinaw sa inyong panimalay. So this morning, I want to share with you our message na adra sa inyong uh, programs, the godly example of godly parents. The godly example of godly parents. So uh, again, it's every, it's every parent's goal to express love for each other in their homes. To be united, not divided. Lain man nga nag-usang magtulog sa inyong panimalay pero wala mong gastorya. Lain man nga ka nang nasigil na mong away. So you have to to be united as a family, not to be divided. So this message is for our parents. For our parents and for everyone who will soon become parents. Okay? Naman yun nasa ito ang desire nga nga mag-establish na ito ang kaugalingon nga nya pamilya and uh, previous Sundays I I preached about uh, being a good example as a youth, di ba? Mato kong preach about sa mga young people and sa mga professionals to become exam- a good example. Let no one despise the youth, but uh, be an example in speech, in conduct, in faith, in your love, in your purity. So be an example to gain. The respect of others. You cannot uh, demand, you cannot force someone to respect you. You have to earn that respect by being a good example to the church, to every believer. So here, in our text, in our message, para din sa taong mga parents, I am not speaking in front of you, nga ka na na-experienciado yun sa pamilya. Wala mo kay pamilya, wala ko kay asawa, wala ko anak. But I will be sharing with you the word of God and based on my experience sa akong family, sa family na ako, sa akong parents. So, uh, here in our text in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 9, mo ni ang ato ang uh, account, ato ang text karon, ron, ato ang pagatunan. Uh, here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 down to verse 9, dili na nato na ibasahon, but uh, every point niya ato ang i-explain karon. Uh, we will try to uh, read the verses para dito madugay 
So here in our text, in the Deuteronomy, it, it will give us three clear instructions on how to become godly parents to your children. How to become godly parents to your children. First is parents should live righteously. That is found in verses 1 to 3. And second is uh, parents should love wholeheartedly. That is found in verses 4 to 6. And lastly, third, parents should learn diligently the word of God in verses 7 to verse 9. So first instruction here on how to become a godly parent to your children, on how to bring an, an impact, godly impact, good influence sa inyong mga kaanakan is to live righteously. Live righteously as a parent. Uh, in verses 1, now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing, crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you. So, parents should live righteously because successful parenting always begins with a relationship with God. Parents' relationship with God. Nindot ang relationship ni mo sa ginoo because no parent can ever succeed in helping a child grow up in the Lord unless they know the Lord. Unless ang parents, kaila sila sa ginoo and naa sila intimate ng relationship sa ginoo. So in other words, you will never be able to lead your children if you don't live a righteous life. You will never be able to lead your children in the Lord if you are uh, living a life nga dili, mahima, dili pleasing sa atubangan sa ginoo. Example, mamadlong ka sa mga anak na ayaw sige bisyo, ayaw sige panigarilyo. Pero ikaw mismo ang ginikanan, halos makakurot ka drag o sa kapakite sa sigarilyo. So sa kadlaw. So how can you set an example to your children if you will never live uh, righteously? So as a parent, you have to set an example by uh, living a righteous life. In, in, in verses 1 and 2, it says that uh, first phrase in verse 2, that you may fear the Lord your God. You, you are setting a godly example to your children by uh, possessing reverential fear. Reverential fear in the Lord. That you may fear the Lord your God. Fear the Lord your God means uh, we are to walk with awareness. Naakitay awareness sa, sa glory and sa holiness. Sa ato ang ginoo, we are to walk with awareness of God's glory and His holiness. And that is what the wisest man on earth said in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. That uh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For God shall bring, and uh, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will judge every work into judgment, whether it be good or evil. The conclusion of the whole matter. What matters most is our fear sa ginoo. Fear God. To fear the Lord. This means that a parent's primary responsibility is to walk in the fear of the Lord. This is your uh, primary responsibility as parents. To walk in the fear of the Lord. Ano sa maning klase nga kahadlok? Ano sa maning uh, fear ang gina ingon diri? Sa ito ang text, fear ba niya? Same ba niya sa kahadlok nga kung naka sa ngit -ngit. Same ba niya sa kahadlok kung uh, gukuron ka o giro? Same ba na nga feeling? Yung nga na. Uh, fearing the Lord here means to be in reverent awe, to stand in awe of His holiness, to give Him complete reverence, to honor Him as the God of great glory, as the God of majesty, purity, and, and power. This means that you recognize the holiness sa ginoo. Ikaw nga parent na akay awareness, recognition sa, sa, sa holiness, sa pagkagamhanan sa ginoo. 
So you have that uh, understanding because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So our understanding of who He is because He is sovereign, He is our Creator, He is the God of the universe, and we need to submit to His will. We need to submit to His will. We have to respect God in your homes, sa inyong panimalay. You have to show respect sa ginoo. As parents, dapat na amoy reverential fear, respect, na ay pagtahod sa ginoo. Kay makita na sa inyong mga kaanakan. Mag-reflect na sa inyong mga anak. And examples of not showing respect, not uh, possessing this fear, sa ginoo, is using the name of the Lord in vain. Diba? In every action, you always respond. In mga respond, ayun, mo dyan, masulti ni mo. Using the name of the Lord in vain. And matinga ka, nga anong nakuha na sa mga mga anak, nga anong asa man siya nakatoon, of course, ay muha. Kaya ka na itong mga ginasulti, kanin yung mga ginasulti, ma-adapt sa mga mga kabataan. So, another example of not showing respect is Uh, today is Sunday. Example, Dominggong Dako. Pero mas gipalabin mo ang imuhang trabaho, imuhang laag, or or on sa may mga responsibilities ni mo dira. Okay, uh, maybe you you are thinking kasabot ra ang ginoo. Kasabot, kasabot ra mga ka Lord, pero maybe daw ga simba. Pero maybe daw ko ga ya, attend sa daogan. May mga fellowship karon ra man eh. In Proverbs 1.7, it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. So, uh, until we understand who God is and develop this reverential fear of Him, we cannot have true wisdom. We cannot have that true wisdom because true wisdom comes only from understanding of who God is. That He is holy, He is just, He is righteous. And parents should possess this reverential fear of God. Because your children, your children, they, they are observing your actions. Kung naaba kay pagrespeto o kahadlok sa ginoo. So that is uh One of the ways you are setting a godly example to your children to possess that reverential fear. And if you are doing this, you are helping your children grow in the Lord. If you have that reverential fear of God. The next phrase here, in, uh, again in chapter 2, is not just to fear that you may fear the Lord, but also to keep all His statutes and His commandments which I command you. So you set a godly example to your children by obeying the Lord, by obeying the Bible, the Word of God. So when we fear the Lord, we should always obey His will. We will always obey His Word because your children will, will often model what they see in your life. It is your responsibility to teach them to obey God's Word. And it is clear here in this verse to keep all His statutes or to, to keep all His commandments which I command you that you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Again, money gagamit sa ni Solomon to fear God and to keep His commandments. So, if, if you do not teach them to obey the word of God, there's also a great tendency that they will not obey you as his or her parents. There's a tendency because you are not teaching them to, to observe. You are not teaching them to obey God's word because obedience is the first step 
you must teach to your children. Kaya ang bata, it's, it's their nature to disobey. Bata pa lang ganit na, pero kamauna na masupak. Ingno ni mo, ayaw lagi ng himuha, okay? Di na maayos mga, pero wag hapon himuha, balikon rin hapon. Sa baby pa na, naan yun na sa kan? It's their nature. It's our, as human sinful nature. We, 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 disobey, we disobey. So, as a parent, you have to set an example to obey God's word. Dapat makita nila sa mga kinabuhi that you are obeying what the word of God says. Because uh, there's no better witness to your children than the intention to take the Bible seriously. The intention to obey the word of God. Because if you obey, there's always a reward for it. There's always a reward for you because the Bible always emphasizes that obedience brings blessings. In verses uh, 2 to 4, continuation, ane, uh, ing on rin, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, and all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. This is the reward, that all the days of your life may be long. And hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is the reward of God. Sa obedience niya, sa mga, sa obedience sa mga Israelites, sa so, yaha, God promised Israel that when they followed His word, He would bless them and reward their lives. And the same holds sa ato akaron nga adlaw, sa ato generation karon. Uh, the same holds true today that God has promised to bless those who walk in His will and follow His word. He blesses those who are obedient. And your children need to know when they obey God, He will surely bless them. There's always a blessing after the obedience. So, the question is, are you teaching your children to obey God? Do your children know that uh, God will bless us when we obey Him by giving out, our, by, by giving our tithes, by giving our offering? Do your children know that God will bless honesty? God will bless kindness. God will bless your your patience. So parents should live righteously by setting an example to fear God and to obey His commandments. Another thing here, second instruction here in verses 4 to 6, parents should love wholeheartedly. Parents should possess this love wholeheartedly. In verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words I command you today shall be in your heart. Parents should love wholeheartedly. Not just to live righteously, but also to love wholeheartedly. And this verse was quoted by Jesus in the New Testament when uh, someone asked him, what's the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus answered, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And this is the most important of all. And he added that the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And this is the greatest commandment of all that God has given to his people. It's not the Ten Commandments. It's your love for the Lord. Ang imuhang pagigugma. And in these perilous times where people are lovers of self, lovers of pleasures, lovers of money, materialistic, it's very important for your children to see that uh, the parents' love is to be focused only on the Lord. It's very important 
for your children to see that, your, that you as parents, your love is focused on the Lord. Children need to know that no one or no thing comes uh, before our relationship with God. Maybe mas hatag tag importansya sa onsay mga 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 hobbies na to. We, we spend more time on on uh, sports or on sa mga 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 gadgets na to. Because today's generation, daghan na kayo mga butang makapad, makadivert sa tong mga attention and even our affection. Pwede nga ato ang mga gadgets, dihan na lang ito spend time, pwede nga ang imuhang, imuhang uyab, imuhang, imuhang asawa, imuhang pamilya. And it's clear here in, in this, uh, in, in, in Exodus, that thou shalt have no other gods before me. You, have, you will have no other gods before me because God is a jealous God. And He doesn't want nga ang imuhang time nga dapat ihatag ni mo sa ginoo, nahatag na sa uban. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And anything, anything can become a god to us. Anything we worship or, or put an excessive amount of time, they can become a god to us. Even, even, even your feelings, they can become a god if you allow them to control you. So God doesn't want to be your, your second option. He must be your priority as parents. God must be your priority. And love God with all your heart. This means our, your, your affection, your time, your attention, the actions that you offer to the one, to the object that you love. And to love God is to put Him first. So how to love God with all your heart is to put God first, to prioritize Him, your worship, your service, ang imong pag-anhidri sa simbahan every Sunday, your commitment, your dedication, your faithfulness are the manifestation. They are the manifestations of your love for the Lord. And kung makita na sa imong mga anak, kung unsa ni mo kahigugma ang ginoo, ma-adapt na nila. It will bring impact sa ilahang kinabuhi. Influence sa ilahang uh, kinabuhi. So, you, you, you need to set an example to, to, to love God with all your heart. And I added also here, is not just to love God, but also to love, you set a godly example to your children by loving others. Loving others, loving, loving your neighbor as yourself. Kining a phrase, to love your neighbor as yourself is found in the Bible eight times. Not just once or twice, but eight times. Nakita sa Bible. Many times in my message, sa akong sermon rin, ma-mention ako ni, uh, to love God and to love your neighbors as yourself. But loving your neighbor as yourself, lisod ka ayaw. It's not all, it is not always easy to love your neighbors as yourself. And that is why God made it a command. God made it a command. Nya dapat himo unin mo. Dili lang na siya suggestion nya. Ah, okay Lord, sige. Higugmaon ra na ako kung silingan if gusto na ako, if feeling na ko. God made it a command to love your neighbors as yourself. When the Bible says to love your enemies, lisod gayo, di ba? To love your enemies. Labi na, dako, kina siyag sala sa imo ha. So if you don't love your enemies, makita na sa imo mga anak, ingas lang ah, si mama gani, magsige maghihapog pangaway. Si mama gani, magsige maghihapog ng story agdili maayo sa uban. So you have to love others as yourself. Because the measurement, aning a command, is as yourself. The measurement of your love for others is how you love yourself. To love your neighbors as yourself is you need to love yourself first. Sometimes ma, ma misunderstood nata ni, nga it's it's wrong to love ourselves, or it is sinful to love ourselves. We are uh, 
so strict nga sala ang paghigugmas ko galingon. But even Jesus Christ, he loves us. Mo ni gipakamatyan sa Ginoo because he loves us. Ang sala dira is ang pride nga kanang permi lang kaga unahuna sa mga kagalingon, permi lang kaga think nga unahon ni mga kagalingon. So you have to love others by you you have to show love to others as how you love yourself. How you take care of yourself is the same care you have to show to your neighbors. How you treat yourself is the same treatment you have to show to your neighbors. So how can you love others if you don't love yourself? To love your neighbors as yourself is, is to use words, words that uh, encourage their hearts. Words that build them up. Speaking words of encouragement to someone. Uh, you appreciate someone's effort. Salamat kayo sa imuhang uh, servisyo dito sa simbahan, although wala nakagi na sugo. But through, the, through your words, kana nagapakita nga, naga, naka-encourage na sila ha. Nga na din naka-appreciate day ha song service day. And it shows that you love them, you, you, you care for them. You give someone a compliment or maybe bisitahan nimo sila silang balay and offer a prayer. You are showing care and concerns and that is showing love for your neighbors. Showing love for your neighbors. It's not only f- uh, within this church, in this building, but your neighbors are everyone. Everyone yung mamit nimo. They are your neighbors. And as parents, they are observing your words, your children are observing your words and your actions. How you treat others. How you care for others. Inahina na nila kaka-adapt. So you have to love others as yourself. And lastly here, in verses 7 and 9, uh, it's not just parents should live righteously, should learn, I should love wholeheartedly. And lastly here, parents should learn diligently. In verses 7 to 9, it says, uh, You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts or the gates or the doorposts of your, of your house and on your gates. So parents should learn diligently the Word of God, the things that God has commanded to you. So you are setting a godly example by giving importance to the Word of God. And this is the message last Sunday, um, sermon series, na to, a guide for young leaders. When Paul uh, instructed Timothy, to give importance to the word of God. He said, until I come, devote yourself. Devote yourself to the public reading of scripture. Devote yourself to exhortation and to teaching. Give importance to the word of God as a young leader, as a young pastor. As a church of Ephesus, you have to give importance to the word of God, to the public reading. Ang public reading is to read the scriptures aloud. Public reading. To read the scriptures aloud because not everyone can read. Dilitanan sa ilaha that time makabasa sa original nga text. So someone has to read the scripture aloud. Someone has to read the scriptures aloud. Okay, maybe mapato ang time nga ilahang ilahang Bible na scripture sa so, original sa Septuagint yun nga Greek translation. So karon daghanag mga translation sa atong Bible and uh, kada usa nato natay ka kalingong Bible na ganit ay mga Bible sa atong mga cellphones applications so dali na kayo maka-access at that time Paul gave importance instructed Timothy to give to give importance to the reading of the word of God to the public reading someone has to read aloud the scripture so everyone can hear And after that, not just reading, but also exhortation. 
the explanation of the verse. Explanation, reading the scripture aloud because it was part of the Jewish worship. That's the only time they can have access to the scriptures. So someone has to explain it. And more responsibility ni Timothy as a pastor. Explain the word of God to them. Explain and also teaching. To teaching, devote yourself to teaching, the application. Lessons to apply, commands to follow. So unsa may akong sundo na ni, kay mo man pulong sa ginoo. Unsa man ang sugo sa ginoo, unsay sundon ani. So you must give importance to the word of God. As parents, you should set an example to teach your children to give importance to the word of God. You can have your your family devotion every night. You can have your uh, family devotion every morning. Read one chapter a day. Meditate it day and night. So if makita nila that you are reading your Bible, you are reading the Word of God, that will give influence to your family to love God more and to know God more. Because you give importance to the Word of God. It is essential that parents should have a personal time of prayer and Bible study. So you need to be growing so that you can help your children to grow as well in the Lord. It is essential that you come to Sunday, attend Sunday school, join the service. So in that way, you are setting a good example, a godly example, by giving importance to the Word of God. You teach your children, you know, mag -mag -mag memorize a verse. Bata pa lang na sila, imuha na tudluan. A verse. So you are giving importance to the Word of God. Another one here is, you set a god godly example by imparting to your children the Word of God. It's not just by giving importance, but imparting. Gina impart ni mo, gina transfer ni mo sa, gina tudlo ni mo sa ilaha. Ang unsay, uh, gitudlo sad sa pulong sa gino. You shall teach them diligently. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When you spend time together, when you rise up, when you lie down, teach the word of God. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So this verse says that we are to diligently teach the word to our children. The word diligently means to, to wet or to sharpen. And this carries the idea of, of uh, stabbing, stabbing one object, penetrating to one another. So in other words, ang imuhang training, your training should deeply penetrate into the heart of your children. Stabbing, nga ka ng diritsyo gyud sila mga kasing-kasing. And Moses said to Israel, You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets on your forehead. The idea here is that the, the Israelites were to constantly uh, view God's commandments in their mind in order to, to carefully and continuously, continuously obey or, or observe them. Na asilah mga utok, na asilah mga panghuna-huna ang pulong sa ginoo. And you shall write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. Kining gates dere, uh, it refers to the gates of the cities. Of the cities because uh, most, in, in ancient Israel, most of, of houses, walay mga gates. And ang gates ani is, this, this means nga, Sa inyong government, sa inyong city, you have to give importance to the Word of God. Teach them the Word of God. So you are a setting a godly example by imparting to your children the Word of God. What you have learned from the message aning a Sunday, you can discuss it to your children. Nak mo niya natunan. Maybe your children, wala kayo nila na, na absorb 
ang pulong sa Ginoo, ang ang wali. So teach them. Impart the wisdom, the knowledge, mga mga natunan sa pulong sa Ginoo. Impart impart the word of God to your uh, children. So uh, this is the third and the last that parents should learn uh, diligently teach the word of god to your children because uh, if if we expect to raise godly children there must be godly parents first if we expect nga ang ato ang mga bata na ay kahadlok sa Ginoo na ay dakong baghigugma sa Ginoo then there must be godly parent, parents first. I grew up in a, in a Christian family, uh, elementary pa lang ko, until high school. Uh, nagmahay ko nga nung pastor akong papa. Nagmahay ko nga nung Bible woman akong mama, anong naaslas sa simbahan tanan. Nagmahay dito ko anak. Kitungod, anay mga ako, anay mga actions nga ka ng dili makapahimaya sa sagino. Oh. Daghan kayo mga bawal nga dili bitaw ka kapag gusto sa mga gustong himuon. So, magito nga time nga nagmahay ko anong anak pa mo pastor eh. Pwede ra man unta nga kanang mga normal lang nga mga ginikanan. But uh, later on na realize na ko nga it's a blessing to grow up in a Christian family. It's a blessing nga Ang mga parents, they are setting godly examples. The influence of my my, my father gave me is uh, his humility. His humility. Although si Papa, when it comes sa amua, stick to jigay na siya. When it comes sa iyong pamilya, sa akin, even sa akong, uh, sa akong mama, sa amua, sa mundo ha, sa akong magsuon, stick to jigay na siya. But when it comes sa uban, nakita na ako nga na ay mga, na ay mga conflicts sa church na ay mga na ginaaway siya inasingkahan even mga fellow pastors but he always responds with humility he always responds with humility so ako nga nakakita makaingon ko nga ang nakaingon ko sa akong self nga bantay lang kapag dako ako dyan mo balos anay kipapa but I realized it's always good, it's always best to respond with humility. And that's what, uh, the in, that's the influence nga gihatag sa kong uh, uh, sa kong papa. And another, is not just sa influence sa kong pa, papa, but also the influence of my mother. The influence of my mother uh, gave me is to be prayerful. Kung na mga decisions, magampo ampo na siya, na mga problema, mata nyo na sa sayo, kay magampo, sahay, mamukaw pa na sa mua, kay apilon may gampo, apilon may gampo, niya. para na mo, murag, wala ra, sige na lang, tumano na lang, mata na lang sa'yo, kay para mag, magampo. But later on, it's a blessing sa mua nga part, kato naghatag og impact, wala yun to nag, nagsayang ang ilahang example sa mua. At, to be prayerful. The prayer is very important. I am not sharing this para ipanghambog sa inyo ang akong family. I'm sharing this because this is the example my parents showed to us. And this is because of God. This is because of uh, giving importance to the word of God. This is because of their love for the Lord. I am not as humble as my father. I am not as prayerful as my mother. But because of their example, kato naghatag og dako nga impact sa ako ang kinabuhi. And so the question is for us this morning, what mark or what legacy did your parents leave you? Sa tuwang tanan, unsay ma-remember nimo nga kana naghatag og dako nga impact sa mga kinabuhi? nakita ni mo sa mga parents. And for our parents who are here, what impact can you give to your children? On sa may influence na mahatag ni mo sa mga anak, 
Are you setting an example to your children by by reading the Bible? Nagaset ba kag example by spending time in prayer? Are you setting an example by going to church? Every prayer meeting, every Sunday services? Are you setting that example to your children? Do you discipline your children in a godly way? So you are setting an example to your children if you live righteously, if you love wholeheartedly, and if you learn diligently. And the togetherness in the family, kining uh, complete mo, complete mo sa yung pamilya, read God's word together, pray together as a family, go to church together, or sp- spend meal time together. Kani masuko yun ako kan, papa ani, basta dili mi kompleto sa la mesa, dali rin yun masuko, dapat kompleto yun mi tanan. So if you want to raise godly children, you must be a godly parent first. If you want to raise godly children, you must be a godly parent first. Let us pray. Our great God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message that uh, we have learned this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the instructions. We thank you, Lord, for our parents that uh, they are loving us unconditionally, sacrificially. We thank you, Lord, for their efforts. And I am praying, Lord, for our parents who are here today. Lord, bind them with your love. Continue to help the, the parents to set godly examples to their children. I know they are not perfect. But by your grace, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can help them, Father, to set an ungodly examples to their children. So bless your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.